I got some audio samples from one of my viewers who does a regular podcast. She was looking for the perfect settings to make her volume equal. I will show you how the principles of sound better will make the sound level equal. I have two clips here which is recorded in the same environment. I will expand the timeline by scrolling and showing you which problem I am trying to solve. Let's hear some parts to understand the issue. Just for one sentence. Let's hear from the beginning of this clip. Oh my gosh, I could give you so many of my examples, but let's take a couple that maybe more people can relate to. So say someone wanted to start a new diet, but I, you know, I can't decide, should it be Whole30? Should it be keto? Mm, maybe I don't know enough about them and they go back and forth and they just never decide. That's procrastinating. This is a decent audio recording hitting a good level in the playback meter, but some parts are too quiet. I, I, For know, example, decide, here is too quiet. And also some here. Forth and they just never These kinds of quiet parts are all over the audio and on contrary some too loud parts. So how do we make the overall audio comfortably audible for the listeners? I will show you how we can do that with these four effects applied with correct settings. Before that, I will join the clips as all the effects have to be applied over all the clips. To join the clips go to Edit, Clip Boundaries, and Join. I will have to select the clips to join, press Command A to select all. Clips are joined and I have got only one track. The first step will be noise reduction, and I will find a noise sample from the track. An ideal noise sample is where you have only the white background noise. It seems this little dot is a mouth noise, let's find it in another place. Here are also some mouth clicks with background noise, so let's try to find a good noise sample. It seems a good noise sample without mouth noise. The reason for searching for only white noise is how Audacity noise reduction works. Audacity is good at only removing regular background noise. So if I give some mouth noise in the noise sample which is a kind of irregular noise, and that will confuse Audacity. As I manage to get a sample of only regular background noise, Click Get Noise Profile to give Audacity the sample. I will go to Noise Reduction again and configure the settings. The audio recording I am working on has very little white noise, so I will set Noise Reduction to 7 dB. Sensitivity will be 6 and Frequency Smoothing Bands will be 6. Noise Reduction is done and the next step will be the EQ. I am not going to add any fancy equalization to this audio. I will add only the EQ which should be applied to any voiceover. I will use a low roll-off for speech with a simple modification. You will get a low roll-off for speech in factory presets. Human voice frequency starts with 80 Hz and later, so nothing for human voice below 80 Hz. I will adjust the roll-off line from 80 Hz. You can roll off from a higher frequency like 100 Hz or more, I am showing a very safe measure. I will apply this EQ, and if there is any noise below 80 Hz those will be reduced. EQ is done, and it's time to make the sound level even. The compressor effect will take care of loud and quiet parts, and we have to measure some value first. Identify some soft parts and keep an eye on the playback meter. Maybe more people can relate to. For this part, it was between minus 18 to minus 12. Do this thing with some other parts to get a good I, I measurement. Can't decide. Should it this be part was between minus 24 to minus 18. This measurement is very important, otherwise you won't be able to reduce the gap between soft and loud sounds. Do the same thing for some loud parts. I will quickly measure some louder peaks. But let me tell you a quick story. It's but let me tell you a quick story. It's there are quite some high peaks, and you should not forget to take multiple measures. I know, I kept. Like I couldn't even move on and write. A Every time it is crossing minus 12 and sometimes reaches minus 6. After getting all the measurements, go to the compressor effect. I did all those measurements to find out the threshold value. You have to set the threshold value in a way so that it is greater than the softer sound but smaller than the louder sound. It may sound a bit complex, but you have to get this thing right. 
otherwise, the compressor effect will go in vain. We saw the softer peaks were barely touching minus 18, and most of the time it was below that. For louder parts, it was always more than minus 12. So the threshold value will be between minus 18 and minus 12. All the sounds that are below the threshold level will be amplified, but the sounds above the threshold will not be amplified. So the gap between loud and quiet parts will decrease and the listener will get a much better experience. I will set it to minus 14, but the main thing is to choose a value between minus 18 and minus 12 for the current recording. It may change if you have another recording with a different type of loudness level. If you do not understand this part completely, please watch this part again and experiment with your sample. Then it will make more sense to you. We also need to measure the noise floor, but it will be much simpler. I will select a noise only part and play. Nothing in the meter so let's find another sample where still some noise can be found. Okay, here some noise remains and it is around minus 45 I guess. So the noise floor in the compressor has to be set greater than this value. That way when the compressor increases the sound level of the softer parts, it will not increase the noise. I will set it to minus 40 and that will do. The ratio is another important setting in the compressor, and the higher the ratio, the more compression will be. A ratio of 4 to 1 works in most cases, but you can experiment here a bit. I will set 4.5 to 1. Attack time and release time should be at their lowest value. Uncheck the makeup gain to the 0 dB checkbox, as we will set the gain in the next step. You must have to check the compress based on peaks checkbox for the settings to work correctly. Because I have shown the measurement technique for upwards compression in Audacity, and this checkbox enables that upwards compression. There is another kind of compression named downwards compression, which I am not discussing in this video. If you want to know details about that, I will leave a link in the description. Keep in mind compress based on peaks checkbox enables upward compression, and all the measurement is taken for that type of compression. Click OK and the compression will be done. The next step will be to normalize, or in other words gain control. Peak amplitude should be set to have some room in the playback meter. Zero is the maximum and set a negative value like minus 3 or minus 4 etc. I will set it to minus 4. Let's listen to some parts of the podcast. Oh my gosh, I could give you so many of my examples, but let's take a couple that maybe more people can relate to. So say someone wanted to start a new diet, but I, you know, I can't decide, should it be Whole30? Should it be keto? Mm, maybe I don't know enough about them and they go back and forth and they just never decide. That's procrastinating. Or deciding which workout to start with, you know, like, oh, should I do this or should I do that? Just start, right? or trying to write a paper and can't decide on which topic to choose. The list goes on. So let me tell you a quick story. It's so funny. I was helping our youngest daughter. It is sounding quite nice now, and you can listen to the full podcast on her website. Keep in mind the more the gap between louder and softer parts in the original audio, the more compression ratio you have to set to bring them closer. I will quickly set a ratio of 6 to 1 just to see how it sounds. With an aggressive compression, your sound may become different and not pleasing in some cases. So be careful with the ratio and something between 4 and 5 is ideal for the ratio. I will set the same normalize and listen to it. Let me know if you hear any difference between a higher ratio and a lower ratio. Oh my gosh, I could give you so many of my examples, but let's take a couple that maybe more people can relate to. So say someone wanted to start a new diet, but I, you know, I can't decide, should it be Whole30? Should it be keto? Mm, maybe I don't know enough about them and they go back and forth and they just never decide. That's procrastinating. Or deciding which workout to start with, you know, like, oh, should I do this or should I do that? Just start, right? or trying to write a paper and can't decide on which topic to choose. The list goes on. So let me tell you a quick story. It's so funny. I was helping our youngest daughter with proofing one of her um, big papers before she turned it in. And so there was this word we were 